Hi everyone, welcome to day 12 of Advent of Code 2023. Today was a very interesting day. It took me longer to solve today's puzzles than yesterday's. So if you have any uh, approaches that you want to share in the comments, please do. I'd love to hear about them. Otherwise, we're going to see a time lapse of me solving the puzzles and then I'll explain what they are as well as what my approaches were. So let's get started. Okay, I want to say today was a much more difficult day than yesterday, but I mean, that's up to interpretation. So today we have arrived at the hot springs, except the springs are broken. Uh, there are some operational springs and some damaged springs. Some springs, we don't know whether they are operational or damaged. And our job is to figure out uh, the number of ways that the springs could be assigned operational or damaged such that it satisfies a number of records. So essentially what we're given here is uh, a number of rows of springs. Every single row is denoted by a string of characters, which are either dots, uh, hashtag, or pound sign, or question mark. Dot means operational, hashtag means uh, broken or damaged, and question mark means we don't know. Within every single row, we are given the lengths of the contiguous runs of broken springs or damaged springs. So for example, in this uh, row of springs, we have one damaged spring and then an operational one, another damaged spring, another operational one, and then three more damaged springs. So it's one, one, three uh, would be our record. The runs of damaged springs can be separated by more than one operational spring. So this would also be one, one, three, because we have uh, an operational spring, a damaged spring, three uh, operational springs, one damage spring, four operational springs, and then finally three damage springs, and then some more uh, operational springs. So that's how the records work. But not all of these springs, uh, we know their operational status. So some of them are given as question marks. So we don't know whether they're operational or damaged. And our job is to figure out for every single row, the number of ways we can assign operational or damaged to each of the question marks, such that the, uh, I guess, lengths of the contiguous broken springs is satisfied. Now for part one, uh, this is a relatively simple task or rather direct, I think implementation is obviously tricky, but the lengths of all the springs I took note of and they don't exceed 18. And the convenient thing about this is that two to the power of 18 is a relatively small number. It's like 1 million. Um, it's under 1 million actually. So we can actually just go through all the possible combinations of assignments to the question marks uh, so they're either dot or hashtag, and I'm going to start saying that instead of broken or damaged or operational, because that's just harder for me to remember. Characters are easier to remember than words. So for uh, part one, we can just try all the combinations of dot or hashtag for each of the question marks and see if it satisfies the length uh, or run requirement. So that's what I did for part one. The implementation, uh, the details, I won't get into too much, but essentially what we're doing here is we have this function which tells us whether a uh, run of springs or rather a row of springs satisfies a given, I guess, run length, which is the length of the consecutive runs of broken springs. So this takes in a list of integers, which are either zero for operational or one for damaged, as well as the lengths of the runs turns yes or no. So that's relatively simple to compute. There's some like weird sliding window stuff. It's not exactly sliding window. We're just moving a pointer along, but some off by one errors, whatever that function I somehow implemented correctly. And this second function takes in a string, which is composed of dots, hashtags, and question marks. And it figure out, it figures out the number of ways to assign dot or hashtag to each of the question marks by basically permuting through all to the power of number of question marks combinations and sees if each of them works. If you want to see my code, by the way, it's going to be linked in the description. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail here in the video, but if you want to check it out, codes right down there. Yeah, so we just go through all the combinations and see if each of them works, add them up, and that's our answer for part one. For part two, we have to unfold the records. And what that means is for the strings of characters representing a row, we have to make five copies of those and then insert question marks in between each of those copies. So four question marks to make our new, I guess, string representing the row. And we also have to uh, turn the list of runs into five times what it originally was by taking five copies of the original and putting them uh, side by side. So. This is part two, and it's significantly more difficult because we can't just apply what we have in part one. Um, going through 
like 5 times 18, which is a big number, like 90. Um, 2 to the 90 is way too big, so we can't just iterate through all 2 to the 90 combinations. We need to do something smarter. And this is going to be a very high-level overview, but we're going to use dynamic programming, which is extremely exciting. So let's take a look at one of the examples. Why don't we take a look at um, just what's an interesting one that has more than one solution? So let's say four arrangements. Okay, let's take a look at the second one um, and paste it into OneNote right here. Okay, so this is going to be our string and the length requirements. We're going to basically solve this problem um, by asking a more complicated problem. So we have, let's say, n characters, so n springs total, and the length of the contiguous run list. So we're going to have m of those, so there's m contiguous runs. What we're going to do is construct a dynamic programming table uh, that is n by m times length of max run. And I'll explain why this is useful in a bit. So the question we're going to ask is, for a given index i, which is between 0 and n, and an index j between 0 and m, uh, and an integer k, which is between 0 and the length of this consecutive run, uh, which is index j, uh, we're going to basically take all of the characters between um, 0 and i. So we're going to take this string, if it's called s, we're going to just take the first i characters, and I'm going to denote it by this, take the first i characters of the string. We're only going to focus on that. We're not going to consider any of the rest of them. And we're also only, to, only going to consider the first j numbers in the runs list. So we're just going to take runs uh, up to j. And the question is, what is the number of ways to assign dots and hashtags for just this substring, just this prefix of the original string, and also just uh, these runs? So for example, if we want to say, let's actually write this out. So it's uh, dot question, question, dot, dot, question, question, dot, 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 uh, question, hashtag, hashtag. Um, and we also have one, three, one, one, three. So this is going to be our i, and this is going to be our j. And let's say we're, and there's going to be a third dimension to this, which is kind of difficult to draw on a 2D screen. But let's suppose we're answering it for j equals 5, and uh, sorry, i equals 5, and j equals 1. So that's going to be this cell right here. So our question is going to be, given this string, which is dot question question dot dot question, um, and we're only going to focus on this prefix. Uh, what is the number of ways to make the lengths of the consecutive broken, or I guess hashtags, conse consecutive broken strings, make it be 1, 1. So this depends on the k value as well. If k is 0, then this second number is going to be a 0. And if k equals 1, then this second number is going to be a 1. So basically what k is controlling, this variable input to our function here, that's going to be the, I guess, last number in our list. So we, we do need to be able to control that as well. So for the sake of demonstration, let's suppose k equals 0. We can have k equals 1 as well. Um, so in this case, k equals 0 means uh, we're going to want, this is the length of the uh, current consecutive run of broken springs. So this is the length of cur uh, consecutive run of hashtags. So that's why k ranges from 0 to the length of the current run. k is the number of hashtags that we're on right now. So for k equals 0, um, in the, just in this case, we want the current uh, substring to end in a dot, because if it was a hashtag, the current length would be 1 of the run length, I guess. So it can't be a hashtag. It has to be a dot. So the number of ways to do this, I guess, would have to be 1. Uh, because there's exactly one way to assign the question mark such that the current length actually, wait. For the sake of demonstration, let's say k equals zero. So the number of ways to assign uh, Dots and hashtags to the question marks here has to satisfy uh, that the lengths of the runs are One and zero for each of the hashtags and we have to be ending in a run of length zero now What does that mean? That means that we have to have a hashtag somewhere um, previously because there's a run of length one previously. So we can either have dot hashtag dot 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 something, 
uh, or dot dot hashtag dot dot something because these two are question marks they can be whatever they want um, but we need to have a run of length one previously now what k equals zero means is that uh, this last one actually has to be a dot because if it were hashtag we would have a run of length one so the answer to this is two and this is a just an example of what an answer to this function would look like to compute this in general there's a lot more details involved uh, it looks kind of like this, what I just talked through, but that was just one example. Um, so you can see where this function is sort of going. We would have another value in this cell for k equals one. And in that case, the answer would probably also be two because there's two ways to assign dots and hashtags to just this substring so that the length of the consecutive runs of hashtags is one and one. Um, so there would also be another two. So it sort of pops out of the screen for k equals zero and k equals one. Anyways. Dynamic programming is really hard to explain, uh, so I'm just going to jump to the code for a little bit. We retain basically the same structure as part one. We're going to have this function, which takes in a list of integers, which are either 0, 1, or negative 1 for, uh, I guess, operational, broken, and we don't know. And we're also going to take in the lengths of the consecutive runs of broken springs as an input. This is the giant DP function, dynamic programming function. Uh, it's a three-dimensional array, as I described. It's n by m by the length of the maximum, uh, the longest run, I guess. And the logic here is uh, kind of a lot to go through, but I'll, I'll cover it in some high level, um, at some high level. So the base case is when we're at i equals zero, we're only considering the first character and we want to know for every single j, every single k, and again, j is the current, I guess, run that we're on, and k is the, I guess, number of the current run, so the number of hashtags that we have so far. For the base case, some of the stuff just doesn't make sense. Some values of j and k don't make sense at all. Um, for example, if j is not 0, if j is like 2, and we're supposed to be on the second run, but we're still on the 0th index, then this is impossible, so the answer will just be 0. If we have a hashtag right now and k is not one, meaning we are on a run that is not of length one, even though we're only at the first character and it is a run of length one, then that doesn't make sense. So our answer is going to be zero as well. Otherwise, the answer is going to be one, meaning there's one way for this to happen. And that makes sense. By the way, all the way uh, for all of these three if statements, j is guaranteed to be zero because we have this continue statement over here, which basically skips the rest of the code if j is not equal to zero. And again, if j is equal to zero and i is equal to zero, um, then we're good. But if j is not zero in this case, that doesn't make sense. If we're at a dot and k is not zero, then we're confused because k has to be zero. The current length of the run is zero because um, we have a dot and we're only on the first character. So that doesn't make sense. We assign a zero uh, as the answer to our function. Otherwise, there's a one very analogous to the uh, hashtag case. If x is a question mark, then k can be anything it wants. It can say we are on a run of length 0 or a run of length 1. In either of those cases, the answer is 1. But if not, um, then the answer is 0. For all of the other cases, if i is greater than 0, we're going to compute two numbers. The first number is the number of ways for us to assign dots and hashtags to the substring um, given j and k. If the current character is a dot, and the second number is the same thing, but if the current character is a hashtag. And the reason we separate these two numbers is because if we have a question mark, then the total number of ways to assign um, is actually the number of ways if this is a dot and if this is a hashtag, because the question mark can be anything it wants. So we compute these two numbers. The first number is the number of ways to assign if the current character is a dot. And what we need to guarantee here is that k is zero, because k is the, again, length of the current run, and it has to be zero because we're on a dot and there's no broken springs. Otherwise, uh, we need to uh, we need to check if we're on the first run or not. If we're not on the first one, then we go back one step and we check the previous character's answer. So sort of for the substring up to i minus 1, what is the answer for j minus 1, meaning the previous run? Um, and we maintain our current position in the run. Or we can step back uh, one step, but go like to a completely... On, on the same run, but uh, zero characters, because k equals zero, so we are already currently on the zeroth one. We could replace this with k, it would be the same idea. And finally, if um, we have j equals zero, which means we're on the first run, but i is greater than zero, we need to make sure there's no hashtags before uh, this, because if there are hashtags before this, then the runs 
would have already started and j would not be zero meaning this is impossible so we need to check if there are any hashtags before the current character if j is zero if there are we're, we're confused if it's not then we're good and there's one way to do this we also need to ensure that k equals zero um, but we already checked for that up here now to find the number of ways to assign to our prefix given that the current character is a hashtag, what we're doing is basically extending the previous run of hashtags. So what we need to do in this case is go back a character, um, J, same run still, because we're just continuing the previous run, but one fewer number of hashtags because we're gonna add a hashtag to the end, uh, meaning in the previous substring, we only need one fewer hashtag. If K is zero though, meaning the current run is zero, uh, this is bad because we have a hashtag and the current run has to have a length of one, meaning this is impossible. That's why we have zero. Um, yeah, so we compute those two numbers, which are the number of ways, again, to assign um, dots and hashtags to the question marks, given what the current character is. If the current character is actually dot or hashtag, then we just chuck those numbers in. If it's a question mark though, it's the sum of those two numbers, because again, the question mark can be whatever it wants. At the very end, we're going to ask our question one last time, given i equals n and m uh, and j equals m, meaning we're at the end of the string, we're at the very, very end of the string. Uh, our current run is, we're at the end, we have no, I guess, broken springs on our run because we're at the end of the runs, we have no runs. And the question is going to be how many ways are there to assign dots and hashtags to all of the question marks because we're opening up uh, to the entire string and I guess this should be n minus one, but it's the same idea That's just a small implementation detail. So that's it for part two We have this function which does the same thing as part one But runs much faster because it doesn't go through two to the power of 90 combinations We also need to uh, expand our input strings So these are going to be times five and also joined by question marks and commas respectively because that's what the input tells us to do Whew, that was a lot of talking, but yeah, part two is complicated because we have to use dynamic programming. I'm sure there is a faster way to do this because somehow um, people answered this in like 20 minutes, but I took an hour. So maybe there's a faster way to do this besides dynamic programming. If you have a way, I would love to hear about it in the description, uh, sorry, in the comments below. Um, it's getting late. But otherwise, thanks for watching day 12 of Advent of Code 2023. Again, questions, comments, leave them down below. My code is in the description, and I'll see you tomorrow for day 13.